this website is called neil.fun and they added a new um i don't know how to describe it but it's a new add-on to this website it's called space elevator and it shows the heights of the different things and how high they've gone so right here is a hummingbird then over on the right you can see fireworks and down here you can see how many meters up it is then next there's a hot air balloon next highest is mallard i don't know how to pronounce that but it's a plane first plane to fly across the english channel Then is an osprey, and you can see it's starting to rain. This is the troposphere, the lowest layer of the atmosphere. The troposphere contains 99% of the water vapor in the atmosphere. Then is a pigeon in hang gliding, the typical altitude. Up here on the top right, you can see um, the temperature. You can change it to degrees or Fahrenheit. I mean, Celsius or Fahrenheit. I'll do Celsius because more countries use Celsius. Then is the largest helicopter ever built. Nimbostratus clouds are responsible for rainy days. Then the typical altitude for skydivers right here. Then a bald eagle, monarch butterfly, and an alpine cough. That's the only way I think you can pronounce it. Probably another way, but... It's a bit chilly. Pick a scarf to stay warm. I'll do the yellow one. You can see my guy over here on the left has a scarf now. As you climb, the temperature will continue to drop. You can see now it's at negative 7 degrees Celsius. Next is a box kite, mountain goat, white stork, and Vega 5B, Amelia Earhart's plane. Then is a Chilean flamingo in another plane, another helicopter, and a pterodactyl. A zeppelin, wild yak, and a lizard, highest dwelling reptile. This elevator ride needs some music. I don't want to put on elevator music so you can hear my voice better. But that's a cool thing that you can do. Next is a Bumblebee's highest observed flight, then a World War I fighter plane, a Bell 47, first helicopter to fly over the Alps, a bar-tailed godwit, flycatcher sandwort, and an Andean condor. Whoa, a jumping spider, the highest swelling spider. Highest dwelling mammal, the yellow rumped leaf eared mouse. Another plane, a bearded vulture, and a paratrooper max altitude. Above this altitude is known as the death zone because there isn't enough oxygen for human life. Interesting. Whooper Swan. This is the Mount Everest peak. Then there's a bar headed goose. Party balloons. If you've ever wondered where your lost balloons went, at this height, a typical party balloon will pop. Then a common crane, passenger jet, typical cruising altitude. A Spitfire. Another plane. A space shuttle. Rupples Griffin Vulture, highest flying bird. Now would be a good time to pick out your spacesuit. I like this orange one here. And I get to keep the scarf. That's interesting. I like that. As air pressure drops, so does the temperature needed to get to boil water. At this altitude, while water boils at just 54 degrees Celsius. You can see here that we're at negative 56 degrees Celsius. Next is the highest flying helicopter, a P-51 Mustang, a World War II fighter plane. 
Jet streams are bands of strong winds in the atmosphere. They can reach speeds up of up to 275 miles per hour. Another plane, P-80 shooting star. Don't worry, the elevator's pretty strong, I think. You can see that this little elevator my guy is in is starting to shake. Next is a Learjet 45, another plane. An F-35. Now we're on the stratosphere. The stratosphere is home to the ozone, which protects us from full UV rays. Another plane. That one looks really cool. Another plane. Unlike the troposphere, the temperature in the stratosphere increases the higher you go. So we should see that number go up, I think. Another plane. Another plane. The USSR-1. 1933 balloon altitude record. This is the Armstrong limit. Above this altitude, saliva and tears will boil if you don't have a pressure suit. Nacreous clouds are rare clouds found in polar regions. They are made of small ice particles that scatter light in colorful ways. That looks really cool, actually. We are really high up. Down at the bottom, you can see how high up we are. Bell X-1, first aircraft to break the sound barrier. The Explorer 2, 1935 balloon altitude record. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but as a, a high altitude platform station. As the air gets thinner, there are fewer molecules to scatter light, so the sky starts getting darker. And you can look up in the top right, you can see we, the temperature is going up. Now we're at negative 54 degrees Celsius. Highest altitude glider is the Perlin 2. Highest aircraft ejection. U-2, a spy plane. Douglas Skyrocket, first aircraft to reach Mach 2. SR-71 Blackbird. The SR-71 is one of the fastest planes ever made. It can fly at over three times the speed of sound. Another plane that looks really cool. Looks so like something from out of Star Wars. F-104 Starfighter. NASA Helios HP-01. Winged aircraft altitude record. NASA X-43. Experimental hypersonic aircraft. Project El Excelsior. 1960 skydive altitude record. With nothing but a duct-taped pressure suit. Joseph Kittinger jumped from an open gondola and set a record that would last for more than 50 years. Another weather balloon. The ash cloud from the eruption that destroyed Pompeii reached this height. Wow. This one feels really crazy, but it's the highest paper airplane flight. Launch from a balloon, this is the highest paper, uh, paper airplane has flown. Now it makes more sense since it was launched from a balloon. Felix was the first person to break the sound barrier in free fall. He reached a top speed of 843 miles per hour. The Felix free fall. Congratulations, you have made it 0.01% to the moon. Bell X2. The mushroom cloud from the Castle Bravo nuclear test reached this altitude. 
Alan Estos's skydive, current record for the highest skydive. If you're enjoying the video so far, please remember to like the video and subscribe. If you want to watch some of my other videos, please do that as well. Space elevators are actually a possible idea being considered by scientists. I like that. I would like to be in one. They could potentially offer a cheaper and safer way of getting to space. The hard part is making a strong enough cable and finding enough elevator music. Ch Chella Binks Meteor, airburst altitude. Space shuttle when the boosters eject. Sutter's Mill Meteor, breakup altitude. Whoa, blue jets are a rare form of lightning that arc upward in a brilliant blue flash. That is truly brilliant. Now the mesosphere. Congratulations, you have reached the mesosphere and are now halfway to space. The air in the mesosphere is very thin. It has less than 1% of the pressure as the air at sea level. As the air at sea level. BU-61, high-altitude balloon record. The world's fastest elevator travels at 46 miles per hour. A space elevator with the same speed would take 80 minutes to reach space. That's not as bad as I actually thought it would be. Since weather balloons can't reach this height, rockets with sensors are used to learn more about the mesosphere. Sounding rocket. Saturn V, first stage separation. The mushroom cloud from the largest ever nuclear test, Tsar Bama, reached this altitude. I actually made a YouTube short featuring that. Whoa! Sprites are a rare form of lightning spotted over thunderstorms that only last a fraction of a second. While normal lightning is around 4 kilometers long, Sprites can reach up to lengths of 50 kilometers. Space shuttle re-entry. Maximum heat. Since the speed of sound depends on the temperature, sound travels 15% slower up here. Negative 65 degrees Celsius. What's that in Fahrenheit? 989... Negative 89 degrees Fahrenheit. Not the lucient clouds are the highest altitude clouds in the atmosphere. They're only visible at night and at higher latitudes. Most meteors burn up in the mesosphere. It's estimated that over 48 tons of meteors hit the atmosphere every day. V2 rocket, peak altitude. Falcon 9, first stage separation. This is the coldest part of Earth's atmosphere, the thermosphere. Welcome to the thermosphere, the final layer on our journey to space. At 100 kilometers high, the Kármán line is usually accepted as the start of our outer space. Temperatures in the thermosphere can reach 2,500 degrees Celsius, but molecules are so far apart that you wouldn't even feel it. Vostok 1 on the way to space, VSS Unity. As particles from the sun hit the atmosphere, they excite the atoms in the air. These excited atoms start to glow, creating brilliant displays of light called auroras. That's insane. X-15, highest flying rocket plane. You're about to reach a place fewer than 1,000 humans have ever been. Now leaving Earth. Carmen line. And that's the whole thing. Remember to like, subscribe, and watch my other videos. Bye.